The church called a Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end. And all the ages Lumen Christi. Lumen Christi.
Lumen Christi. Dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the Word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people, and in these the last days has sent us his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. 
God said, let us make man in our own image, in the likeness of ourselves. And let them be masters of the fish of the sea, the birds of heaven, the cattle, all the wild beasts, and all the reptiles that crawl upon the earth. God created man in the image of himself. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and conquer it. Be masters of the fish of the sea, the birds of heaven and all living animals on the earth. God said, see, I give you all the seed bearing plants that are upon the whole earth and all the trees with seed bearing fruit. This shall be your food. To all wild beasts, all birds of heaven and all living reptiles on the earth, I give all the foliage of plants for food. And so it was. God saw all he had made, and indeed it was very good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, my soul. Majesty and glory, wrapped in light and in a
Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me so? Tell the sons of Israel to march on. For yourselves, raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea, and part it for the sons of Israel to walk through the sea on dry ground. I, for my part, will make the heart of the Egyptians so stubborn that they, they will follow them. So shall I win myself glory at the expense of Pharaoh, of all his army, his chariots, his horsemen. And when I have won glory for myself at the expense of Pharaoh and his chariots and his army, the Egyptians will learn that I am the Lord. Then the angel of the Lord, who marched at the front of the army of Israel, changed station and moved to their rear. The pillar of cloud changed station from the front to the rear of them and remained there. It came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. The cloud was dark and the night passed without the armies drawing any closer the whole night long. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove back the sea with a strong easterly wind all night and he made dry land of the sea. The waters parted and the sons of Israel went on dry ground right into the sea, walls of water to right and to left of them. The Egyptians gave chase. After them they went right into the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots and his horsemen. In the morning watch, the Lord looked down on the army of the Egyptians from the pillar of fire and of cloud and threw the army into confusion. He so clogged their chariot wheels that they could scarcely make headway. Let us flee from the Israelites, the Egyptians cried. The Lord is fighting for them against the Egyptians. Stretch out your hand over the sea, the Lord said to Moses, that the waters may flow back on the Egyptians and their chariots and their horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and as day broke, the sea returned to its bed. The fleeing Egyptians marched right into it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the very middle of the sea. The returning waters overwhelmed the chariots and the horsemen of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them was left. But the sons of Israel had marched to the sea on dry ground, walls of water to right and to left of them. That day the Lord rescued Israel from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. Israel witnessed the great act that the Lord had performed against the Egyptians, and the people venerated the Lord. They put their faith in the Lord and in Moses his servant. It was then that Moses and the sons of Israel sang this song in honour of the Lord. I will sing to the Lord. This is 
Let us pray. O God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor, even in our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, O come to the water, all you who are thirsty. Though you have no money, come. Buy corn without money and eat, and at no cost, wine and milk. Why spend money on what is not bread, your wages on what fails to satisfy? Listen, listen to me, and you will have good things to eat and rich food to enjoy. Pay attention, come to me, listen, and your soul will live. With you, I will make an everlasting covenant out of the favors promised to David. See, I have made of you a witness to the peoples, a leader and a master of the nations. See, you will summon a nation you never knew. Those unknown will come hurrying to you for the sake of the Lord your God, of the Holy One of Israel, who will glorify you. Seek the Lord while he is still to be found. Call to him while he is still near. Let the wicked man abandon his way and the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn back to the Lord who will take pity on him, to our God who is rich in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways not your ways. It is the Lord who speaks. Yes, the heavens are as high above earth as my ways are above your ways, my thoughts above your thoughts. Yes, as the rain and the snow come down from the heavens and do not return without watering the earth, 
making it yield and giving growth to provide seed for the sower and bread for the eating. So the word that comes from my mouth does not return to me empty without carrying out my will and succeeding in what it was sent to do. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveil the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Gloria in excelsis Deo.
and let us pray. O God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in our church a spirit of adoption, so that renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized in his death. In other words, when we were baptized, we went into the tomb with him and joined him in death. So that as Christ was raised from the dead by the Father's glory, we too might live a new life. If in union with Christ we have imitated his death, we shall also imitate him in his resurrection. We must release that our former selves have been crucified with him to destroy the sinful body and to free us from the slavery of sin. When a man dies, of course, he has finished with sin. But we believe that having died with Christ, we shall return to life with him. Christ, as we know, having been raised from the dead, will never die again. Death has no power over him anymore. When he died, he died once and for all to sin, so his life now is life with God. And in that way, you too must consider yourselves to be dead, but alive for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you. 
when the Sabbath was over, Mary of Magdala, Mary the mother of James and Salome, bought spices with which to go and anoint him. And very early in the morning, on the first day of the week, they went to the tomb, just as the sun was rising. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? But when they looked, they could see that the stone, which was very big, had already been rolled back. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man in a white robe seated on the right-hand side, and they were struck with amazement. But he said to them, There is no need for alarm. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See, here is the place where they laid him. But you must go and tell his disciples and Peter, He is going before you to Galilee. It is there you will see him, just as he told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Our Lenten journey, our pilgrimage through Lent is over. We have travelled with Jesus from the harshness of the desert to the new life coming from the empty tomb. Having walked with Jesus as we carried our cross, we now share in and experience the joy and power of his resurrection. When we look at the news on our televisions, or read our newspapers, we're very well aware of the hardships and pain that exists in our world today. There are painful scenes of war, famine, terrorism on our televisions every evening. It is common to hear of senseless acts of violence that leaves families grieving for the death of loved ones. How are we meant to celebrate Easter in such difficult circumstances. But this is the same world that Jesus was born into, a world of violence, inequality, injustice and poverty. He would have seen it, experienced it and been familiar with it. But it is also into that world that he came with the good news of the Kingdom of God. It is into our world today that the same Jesus comes with the same good news. Evil hasn't triumphed. Sin and death have been defeated. It is in and through the world today that we experience and share his resurrection. The trial and crucifixion of Jesus must have been such a painful and even disappointing experience for his friends, his followers, and his family. They had placed such hope in Jesus, in his preaching, in his teaching, and in his miracles. Then they had to stand and watch as he was betrayed, condemned, beaten, crucified. They stood and watched him die, and their dreams they must have felt died with him. But the resurrected Jesus comes to us as we are, but he also comes as he is. Through the power of God, he is resurrected and comes to us with the gift of new and everlasting life. Death has not had the final say. Where there was despair, God brings us hope. Where there was darkness, God has brought light. Where there was death, God brings us not just life, but new and everlasting life. These are the gifts that God offers each of us 
through the resurrection of Jesus. In a world where the reality is of suffering, violence, and injustice, we are called to be people of hope. This is not just ordinary human hope. This is the hope that comes to us through the resurrection of Jesus. In the face of sadness, difficulty, loss, and pain, we are called to look to and rely on the resurrected Jesus and not just on our own strength and resources. Jesus, Son of God, Jesus, who died for us, Jesus, risen from the dead. We can, in the circumstances of the world, be tempted to give in and despair of the world as it is today. But that temptation flies in the face of the good news and the power of the resurrection of Jesus. And it also flies in the face of who we are, Jesus followers. We are to live our daily lives full of Easter hope, no matter what circumstances we encounter. As Pope Francis says to us, as Christians, we must never look like people who have just come back from a funeral. We must never look like people who have just come back from a funeral. This Easter day, and for the rest of this Easter season, may we be people who are filled with the light, joy, life, and hope of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The Lord is risen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. We now proceed to bless the font and to bless our Easter water, a symbol of the new life we receive through our baptism. Also, we will be proceeding then to confirm uh, the sacrament of confirmation conferred on four uh, candidates who have been through a catechetical program and are now to be confirmed. And as we know, the sacraments of initiation, baptism, Eucharist, and confirmation make us full members of the church. And so we welcome these four people as full members of the church tonight. Dearly beloved, let us humbly invoke upon this font the grace of God the Almighty Father, that those from it who are born anew may be numbered among the children of adoption in Christ. Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God. Saint Michael. Holy Angels of God, Saint John the Baptist, Saint Joseph, Saint Peter and Saint Paul, Saint Andrew, Saint John, Saint Mary Magdalene, Saint Stephen, Saint Ignatius of Antioch, Saint Lawrence, Saint Perpetua and Saint Felicity, Saint Agnes, Saint Gregory, Saint Augustine, Saint Athanasius, Saint Basil, Saint Martin, Saint Benedict, Saint Francis and Saint Dominic, Saint Francis Saviour, Saint John Vianney, Saint Catherine of Siena, Saint Teresa of Jesus, all holy men and women, saints of God, Lord be merciful. 
Lord, deliver us, we pray, from all evil, from every sin, from everlasting death, by your incarnation, by your death and resurrection, by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Be merciful to us sinners. May this font by your grace for the new make this font holy by your grace for the new birth of your children. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the living God, Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. O God, who by the invisible power accomplish a wondrous effect through sacramental signs, and who in many ways have prepared water, your creation, to show forth the grace of baptism. O God, whose spirit, in the first moments of the world's creation, hovered over the waters, so that the very substance of water would even then take to itself the power to sanctify. O God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration, so that from the mystery of one and the same element of water would come an end to vice and a beginning of virtue. O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shod through the Red Sea, so that the chosen people set free from slavery to Pharaoh would prefigure the people of the baptized. O God, whose Son, baptized by John in the waters of Jordan, was anointed with the Holy Spirit, and as he hung upon the cross, gave forth water from his side along with blood, and after his resurrection, commanded his disciples, Go forth, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May this water receive by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son, so that human nature, created in your image and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism from all the squalor of the life of old, may be found worthy to rise to the life of newborn children through water and the Holy Spirit. May the power of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, we pray, come down through your Son into the fullness of this font, so that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism into death may rise again to life with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. And I now call the candidates for confirmation. Laura Hernandez Cabejas, Patience Noakego Odo, Jess Eong, and Jesse Eong. You're very welcome. Laura Bridget, Patience Mary Ann, Jess Francis, and Jesse Praise. Dear brothers and sisters, I ask you now to stand as we renew, along with these confirmation candidates, we renew our baptismal promises. Through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in his holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. 
and all his empty show. I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Amen. And let us pray to God our Father that he will pour out his Holy Spirit to strengthen Laura, Patience, Jess, and Jesse with his gifts and to anoint them to be more like Christ, the Son of God. I invite now the uh, sponsors to come forward and they will place their right hand on the shoulder of the confirmation candidates. Laura Bridget, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Patience, Marianne. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Jess Francis. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Jesse E. Young. Jesse Tres. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon these son and daughters of yours to be their helper and guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And I congratulate Laura and Patience, Jess and Jesse, on receiving the Sacrament of Confirmation and thereby becoming full members of the Church. Congratulations, and the congregation will welcome you as And we now have the sprinkling with the holy water. We sprinkle, all of us will be blessed with this holy water.
and with Easter faith and joy, we now come before Almighty God with our prayers and petitions, the God who is our Father, the God who raised Jesus from the dead. We, pr we pray for all of God's people on this most holy night. May their lives be filled with hope and peace as they rejoice that Christ is risen. May their lives be marked by humility, simplicity, service to those in need, and welcome to all peoples. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for peace, remembering in a special way the people of Ukraine and the Holy Land. May the peace of the risen Christ heal the wounds of violence, terrorism, and injustice. And may peace and justice flourish in our world, in our homes, and in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those newly confirmed in their faith, Laura Bridget, Patience Mary Ann, Jess Francis, and Jesse Therese. May they be filled with the Holy Spirit and empowered to be bold witnesses of Christ's love in the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the suffering, and all those in need. May they find comfort and healing in the loving embrace of Jesus, our risen Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And on this Easter night, we make our own particular prayer to Almighty God. We pray to the Lord. And we remember in a special way on this night when we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus in that sacred way, we remember our own dear faithful departed. We take a moment now to bring to mind those whom we have loved and lost, but whom we believe are now in God's eternal embrace. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. O God, your saving plan has brought us to the glory of this night, making us your sons and daughters, making us rich through your mercy. Bestow on us the power to proclaim near and far the wonders of our salvation through Christ our Lord.
and pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <coughs> Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this night above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered to one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of love together with Francis our Pope Dennis our Bishop all the clergy all the religious all men and women who work in your ministries 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that by the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be coerced with eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And we are united as brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, and so we can pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And we indicate, sorry, that's the deacon's line. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, my soul shall be healed. I just invite 
Laura and Patience, Jess and Jesse will receive Holy Communion first. Body of Christ, Body of Christ, Body of Christ, Body of Christ. Body of Christ.
and let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this Paschal Sacrament one in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And I just ask you please to take a link up with you from our vigil this evening. It contains all the notices for the week and indeed our Easter blessing and greetings to you. I, it falls on me to wish each and every one of you uh, a very happy Easter filled with all the graces and joy of this time. I thank all. I thank you for being with us tonight. I thank those who joined us virtually via our parish radio and Shalom World. And again, to thank Shalom World for sharing our Eucharist here uh, every day with so many people all over the world. And it does make us very aware of those who join us virtually. It makes us very aware of how small the world is and indeed how universal the church is. So I thank Shalom World for uh, bringing that to so many people. Um, I thank all who have helped us throughout the uh, Holy Week and all of the ceremonies. Thank you very much indeed. A particular thank you to our sister sacristans. And again, uh, I think the uh, sanctuary here speaks volumes about the love and care and attention that our church gets. Thank you very much, sisters, for all that you do for our church. Um, and again, I did mention on Holy Thursday, we are so well served by hundreds and hundreds of people who serve the parish in so many ways, and I'm very grateful for that. If I could just thank our ministers of our extraordinary minister of the Eucharist and Eugene McDonough who coordinates that. Our readers, uh, Caroline McCormack co coordinates that and I thank her indeed for that. Uh, our servers, very welcome tonight and very well trained and I thank Elaine Duff who coordinates the servers. Uh, uh, thanks very much for that service. Uh, I congratulate again our four confirmation candidates and I thank Helena Corbett who looked after the catechetical program. Uh, in relation to that sacrament. Thank you very much. I think special word of thanks tonight also. We have really been treated to a feast of music. Beautiful, uh, our choir just magnificent. Thank you very much indeed. And I thank... <laughs> I thank Father Peter, who is uh, at the keyboards, Father Peter Mendez. Um, he's curate in Abbey Leaks, but he spends a good bit of time with us as well, so we don't mind that. <laughs> Thanks, Peter. And Sarah, Sarah Troy is conducting the choir tonight. I thank her for her efforts as well. We have been If we're going to clap, everyone will be here all night. <laughs> but certainly uh, our, our uh, soloists on the psalms tonight uh, were really uh, also very... It helped us to pray those psalms so much. Thank you very much. I thank my uh, priests, fellow priests, uh, for uh, all of their service to our parish. And Father Nick, who joins us on so many occasions. Uh, Eugene, our deacon, who serves the parish so well as well. As I say, we are truly blessed, really, that we are so well served, not only by uh, congregations, but by so many people. Thank you very much. Um, the, as I say, the link up contains all the notices for the week. I might bring to your attention one notice that um, the clocks go back tonight. <laughs> So, sorry, they think they go forward. <laughs> I wish they went back because um, we have a dawn mass in the morning and it means that six o'clock will really be five o'clock. So those of you who are joining us for that, make sure to set your alarm. Um, so the, the clocks, as I say, go forward uh, tonight. So without further ado, uh, we'll ask Almighty God to fill us with that Easter joy. May God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. 
and may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit Amen. come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ, eternal High Priest, you offered yourself to the Father on the altar of the cross, and through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, gave